Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 423, The Benefits Versus the Risks of Hypertensive Treatment. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. When I was 27 years old, my physician began to say to me, oh my gosh, you're borderline hypertensive. And I didn't really know what that meant, but he was concerned about it. So he says, let's, uh, let's look at your lifestyle choices. You need to drink less coffee and you need to really avoid salt. And for the next 20 years, 25 years, doctors would regularly say to me, oh, oh my gosh, you're borderline hypertensive. And I pretty much quit eating salt, did not give up coffee. But they said, well, that's all we're going to do right now. So then in my 40s, doctor said, oh, you've crossed the line. You're now hypertensive, and you need to take blood pressure medicine. So at that time, you were over 140, over 80. I don't know what I was because those in numbers never office. stay in my head. Okay. So, uh, but they, for a while, they thought maybe I had white coat hypertension. Yeah, that I'd means. go to the doctor's office, and it would, because I'm, I'm always afraid doctors are going to say, you're going to die. So I worry <laughs> about going to see them. <laughs> There's a lot worse things If you don't do that. what I tell you, you're going to die. <laughs> so it sounded like my father. Yeah. <laughs> but so they put me on medicine. And I was on medicine for 10 years or so. And then I met you. And you convinced me to look at my lifestyle choices more seriously. Mm-hmm. And I started to exercise. And I lost weight. And I started to eat differently. And, 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 and I got testosterone. testosterone. Mm-hmm. And so I went off of the hypertensive medicine mm-hmm. for five or six years. Then my blood pressure started creeping up again. Mm-hmm. And and yet my lifestyle choices were still the same. So then I went to my regular physician, mm-hmm. not you, and she said, you know, you're doing all the things that we want mm-hmm. you to do and you're not having the success that we want you to have. So maybe for you it's a genetic issue. Mm-hmm. You're just going to have this. Uh, and so we need to treat it. Mm-hmm. Which brings us to our long story short, and thank you for your patience, but we're having a conversation today because we read in October JAMA magazine an article that was originally released, printed in Oxford, England. The British use different sets of numbers to identify somebody that's at risk, that is hypertensive and needs medicine, than the American doctors use. So I asked my physician about it, and she said, well... The standard in the United States is more studies, more data shows we need to use these numbers, which is 140 over 80. You need Mm -hmm. to be below those numbers, below 140 over 80, systolic, diastolic, in order to not need medicine. If you hit that level, then we want you on some level of antihypertensive medicine. In Britain, their numbers are like 155 over 90. Mm -hmm. So there's a 10-point differential. And so what, who's right? So they did a study that sh- that compared low risk. Okay, so I f- first I want to say in Britain it's a pretty homogenous Anglo-Saxon white population. So yes. you have to first think that because we know by our research that blood pressure in African Americans is much more dangerous and has many more side effects and it leads to many more illnesses in African Americans than it does in white Anglo-Saxons. So First, we have to state that because I don't want anyone to think they shouldn't treat their blood pressure if they're an African-American who has high blood pressure because that can lead to kidney damage. It can lead to to many, I mean, having kidney replacements. I mean, basically having to get donor kidneys. This is, it's a... (laughs) Not to mention heart attacks and strokes. Right. It's It's a huge deal for that genetic population. But in the study we're talking about is generally... Oxford, England. I mean, it, it it was thousands and thousands of people that they 38, compared. 38,000 for, was it 20 years? From 1998 to 2015. So, almost. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they followed all of these people, and they put them into a low-risk and a high-risk group. 
And the high risk was somebody who had um, who had already had a heart attack, who already had kidney disease or or some other vascular disease that would obvi- or had diabetes would obviously need blood pressure medicine to protect them from getting these things again. So now we're talking about <laughs> white generally uh, and low risk people. So that's most of our population in the United States, not so. So not they pull all of that us. low risk group out, and they mm-hmm. and they tracked them for twenty years, and they said, so this group that we medicated, that we put on these different blood pressure mm-hmm. medicines. How many of them had heart attacks and strokes? How many of them had what we were worried about them having? And how many died of all causes? All cause mortality. And they compared them to people who had had no no medicines. medicine. Yes. And with the same so, qualification. So what if I come in and I've got, you know, this blood pressure of 150 over 95. In America, I'd be on medicines. In England, I would also probably be on medicine. But there's, but if I weren't, how would my life expectancy compare? It's and interesting. It's it, it. They plotted it out in graphs to make it more visual for those of us who are visual. And the lines were right on top of each other. The mortality went up with age, as it always does. Right. The heart attacks and strokes went up with age, but the 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 actual incidence of these things occurred the same in people who were treated as untreated. It was amazing, and that makes you question what we're doing in the United States. Last last six months, we've backed up and said even lower blood pressure right. is safer, which I don't find to be true. I mean, we put people on blood pressure medicine. It doesn't matter how low they are. We don't really think about that. We think about how high they are. Are they, are, have we gotten them low enough, but not is low to, is low dangerous? So low maybe, can make you tired. So there, there are two sets of numbers, what they call the systolic pressure and the mm-hmm. diastolic pressure. Can you explain what each of those, <laughs> not the numbers, but what does that mean? Okay. So the systolic pressure is the pressure when your heart is is squeezing and pushing the blood the pressure at pres- the with pressure. To push it out. Right. With pressure out into the vessel. Okay. So that's the pressure that you get. That's the power there. of the pump. Power of the pump. All right. And also the stiffness of the vessels is also represented there. If you have a pump that's pushing really hard and the vessels don't dilate, which happens as we get older, then you have high blood pressure because your vessels get stiff. Is that so the, plaque or is that just It can age? be plaque. It can be age. It can be lack of hormones. I mean, that's one it of the things that things. we help right. fix with testosterone. Right. So so when that's the systolic, it's when your heart is contracting, when your heart relaxes, and then the blood vessels are not under pressure, that's that's basically where your, where your blood vessels, what they're exposed to all the time. It's during relaxation. So... If you're going, you should have that lower unless you're really tense or if you have hardening of the arteries, it will keep it up higher. Like I've, I was stressed out for 29 years of delivering babies and staying up all night and running around with my hair on fire. And my diastolic is always high because I was always stressed out. You're so much calmer now. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, I'm not. I'm not stressed in the same way. Right. I mean, that was o- over the top stress. All you, but, all but you, you OBs you out there. You do internalize. I mean, your system automates the standard condition. Right. And you and basically, fight or flight makes us contract our blood vessels. Right. And so when we've done that for 29 years, it's hard to yoga Retrain. yourself out mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. So, um, so that's something that I know that my pressure is higher on the diastolic side than it is on the pump side. So does that answer your question yes, or did ma'am. you want to know something Yes, else? the resting heartbeat is where the blood flow... It, the diastolic. The veins are held open. The degree of pressure... Arteries in are held open. Arteries. And then the, the pumping is how much pressure force is going through. Mm-hmm. Uh, so both of those need to be measured. Right. And, and a systolic can actually be dangerous. I mean, if your systolic is well, you know, into close to 200, oh, then you can, you blow, can, be, you can yeah. blow out a vessel, right. you know? So that's very important, especially as so we get older. So the pump force is what causes a tear or a rip in the artery. In general. In general. So what about just the diastolic? If you just generally have a low resting rate. A low or high? I mean, I mean high. Yeah. Uh, over 80, mm-hmm. uh, 100, ni- 95, mm-hmm. something like that. If, if that's day in, day out, night, always there, mm-hmm. what's your level of risk for that? 
Do we, we know? We don't really know. We don't know. We don't okay. know. We know that it is a risk. But it can be a side effect of, like what I said, stress, mm -hmm. or it can be a side effect of just having vessels that don't relax, that just stay, that yeah. are stiff. Right. So in this study, what they found was no difference in mortality. No all-cause deaths for this 20-year study were literally statistical, I think, four-tenths of a percent difference mm -hmm. between people that had been medicated for those years and people that had not been medicated right. for those years. Mm -hmm. But they're very careful to say the upper age limit was 65 in the study. Mm -hmm. So anybody over that, that it could be different. Uh, and they're careful to say, we don't know why these things are different, but they're different. And so perhaps we ought to look at the issue of do doctors make a mistake when they make their medical decisions based on normals on a lab count, which is something that you talk mm -hmm. about all the time. If you have this statistical creation called normal for an average population. And in this case, mm -hmm. it, it's a homogeneous white population mm -hmm. in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, and you say, well, a normal person will do this. But we're not all the same. We're all, we're not. I mean, even if they live in Britain, they may have been from Italy or they may have been from the Mediterranean. They, right. I mean, or any of the other countries in the British Commonwealth. So, so you can't necessarily judge one person next to the other. You have to look at everything. And so that's an argument you make regularly when we do these podcasts is that you you want to know about symptoms, feelings, lifestyle. How do I feel? Do mm -hmm. I feel good? Am I, mm -hmm. am I active? Am I, do I have a sense that I'm healthy? Mm -hmm. Does my skin look, you know, all the things that you look at that aren't on a lab sheet in front of you or a computer screen. I mean, we use labs to kind of get a baseline and to right. follow treatments. So you use both. I use both, but but I have to look at the patient. And having said all this about lifestyle, for us to know if your lifestyle is the problem or if you genetically have high blood pressure, I have to get your lifestyle better. I have to improve your lifestyle. I have to get you to, to your ideal weight. I have to have you follow directions and actually do what I say. You have to be compliant. Which means you have to eat properly and you have to exercise right. regularly and for a long period of time and you have to lift weights and you have, you know, you have to get your muscle mass up. You have to have all of these things corrected. And then if you still have high blood pressure, then we can deem you genetically hypertensive. Which and is what they've said can, about me. And that's what you can say, thanks mom so, and dad, you know. So, but then there's one more issue involved. Mm -hmm. You have to calculate which risk, you know, am, am I more likely to die from a plane crash or an automobile crash at rush hour? You know, where's yeah. my risk factor going? Because if you get put on these hypertensive medicines for a long period of time, and I don't know what that means. There are risks. There are risks. Well, you never come off a of hypertensive in general. Well, yeah, but I just don't know at what point they say, oh, you've been on this long enough. Now you're more at risk to have, for kidney failure. You're more at risk. Right. For, well, they don't really talk about that. No, I've never had a doctor talk discuss about that with me. They said the you're not going to have a heart attack. So great, but they don't really look at the things that happen when you're on your blood pressure medicine, and no one looks at the low end. Like how low do you go? Like yeah, right hypotension. after you, hypotension, yeah. low blood pressure. Low blood pressure is a big deal, and you can you can diagnose your own blood pressure being low. Is if you if you lean down <laughs> you and you up. stand up yeah. and you're dizzy, then that's Stop low your head. generally that's low blood pressure and you should have your your dose adjusted or the type of medicine you're on for blood pressure adjusted if that's well, you could buy a g suit like pilot use because it <laughs> yeah never mind <laughs> forces all that blood to stay yeah, well, that's that why they don't pass out when they make those dives but what we're trying to fix is high blood pressure and we're giving you something different which is low yes. blood pressure and then that gives you a risk so you can pass out from low blood pressure, which if you're driving, yeah. if you're if you're flying exercising, plane. I mean, they won't if let you fly a plane. Yeah, they won't honest. let you fly a plane if you're on uh, hypertensives, yeah. antihypertensives. So you can um, also just being dizzy makes you feel nauseated and makes you feel sick. Yeah. You can't really perform effectively at work or do the things that you want to do. Even exercise is going to be making you dizzy. So. In the end, people go, oh, well, I won't exercise, which is the wrong answer. The wrong, right answer is get your medicine fixed, or maybe you've lost enough weight, you don't need to be on it anymore. And, and what's the fancy term for that? Syncope. Syncope. Syncope is when you pass out. Yeah. So, so when you do lose weight, when you do follow all these things and you're on blood pressure medicine, you should go back to your doctor and see where your blood pressure is, because maybe when you're off the medicine, you're normal now. 
because you've fixed everything. And if you stay on blood pressure medicine after you're normal, then you might get dizzy. You have a higher but, risk but of having these side effects. But to do that is determined by if your high blood pressure is made from lifestyle choices. Right. Versus genetic. Right. If it's genetic, you're not going to come off the. But medicines. you had a sweet. You had a several years where you didn't need to. I take did. It. I had a sweet spot where. Right. So it was imbalanced. But as I got your older, your lifestyle changes to buy you time. I hope and, so. And four to five years. Well, I meant buy you time of not taking <laughs> I'm the 45 medicine. Forty-five, and I'm still here. And then, <laughs> when you were forty-five, anyway, when we have these, uh, we have a window when you make lifestyle changes. Just because you respond and drop your blood pressure doesn't mean you're not genetically affected and that your blood pressure won't go back up. If you keep your weight the same and you continue to exercise, it still may come back later. Right. So medicine is both an art and a science. We are always moving targets and, and we, we change. Things change. Right now, there appears to be a difference in understanding and parameters set by the American Medical Association and mm -hmm. its recommendations to American physicians, this is standard of practice. This is what you do. And, and it may be because our genetics are different England. than England. It, and and it because well be. we have more of a melting pot. Exactly. Pie. But the reason we're having this conversation is to make you aware that we are moving targets and that we do need the scientific data of lab tests, but we also need the, the exchange with the physicians about our lifestyle and our basic sense of contentment. Uh, do I feel good? Am I okay? Mm -hmm. The heart attacks are called the silent killer because you're not going to necessarily feel bad. You don't walk around with chest pains for weeks mm -hmm. and say, well, what's going on here? And go get your blood pressure mm -hmm. made. You just stroke out. So if they know <laughs> you're at an increased risk of stroking out, they want to put you on these medicines you you want to you consider stay, that. you better stay on <laughs> you, the medicine. Yeah, you better stay. We're on not the saying the medicine is bad. We're just no. saying that there are, there are. I want people to be aware of the low blood pressure problems. And if your blood pressure with your medicine is making you too low during part of the day, then you need to adjust your dose or take it take half in the morning, half in the afternoon, something like that. But that that's very important that you don't get low blood pressure because that's bad for you as well. Got so much better you died. But, you know, we're talking about low risk. Low risk population. British population. 65 and under. And low risk also means, and I want to state this because this is very important, people who are diabetic and are on diabetic medicine yeah. should be on antihypertensives. That's part of the treatment for diabetes, and that is to help save your kidneys. So there is another reason <laughs> to but be... But if you're on the hypertensive... You can have a side effect of kidney failure. Yes, that's true. But uh, it depends on, on what, enough, what so medication again, it's, you're it's on. the balancing point. That's why we go to medical school. Yeah. And that's why explaining this is so complex. Yes. But if this speaks to you, then, and you feel dizzy or you have the side effects of your blood pressure medicine, you should, you should talk to your have doctor. Have a conversation with your doctor. That's all we're saying. Right. And we want you, and we want you to know that, yes, low blood pressure is bad too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a sweet spot. You need to be in it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's lifestyle or genetics, you need to be in it. So work on that, as always. <laughs> Thanks for listening to us. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.